everyone, Linda Israel here, and I am working on a miniature junk journal. I happen to have some scraps of paper. This is some watercolor paper, and then I have a whole, I'll show you, stack of papers that were cut off from making Traveler's Notebooks. I have another video that you can check out for that information. And so I thought, well, what can I do with these little scraps of paper? And so I figured out that if I cut them down to three inches tall and then do it at two and three-fourths inch wide, and then I fold it in a piece, and so I made little book pages out of all of these scraps. So here's even... A scrap from one of my spray box that I put in here I sewed up the edges this is some grid paper again all of these were just pieces left over and for some people that would be trash because they wouldn't know what to do with them I decided we're gonna make a journal today so since this piece of paper that I had in my stash that's watercolor paper I thought well I'll just cut it to be three inches by six inches and I'll be able to make this as a cover. So today I'm going to play with the surface inks by Brutus Monroe. I've got a clear piece of acetate. You could use a piece of plastic from packaging. There's all kinds of things that you could use for this. And what I'm doing is I am mushing the ink pad directly onto this acetate. Now what's going to happen is it's going to create these pools of color on here that I'm going to use to decorate the cover. I got a piece of trash in here. Okay. All right, so I've added Cabbage, Cornflower, and Oz Surface Ink by Brutus Monroe. And then in this bottle, I have some alcohol. And I'm going to spray this to help get those colors to move a little bit. And what will happen when I dip my piece of paper into this, it will have a watercolor effect. So I'm just making sure that those hard edges of the ink pad are gone. See how it's moving? I'm just gonna take my piece of paper and lay it on top and mush it around a little bit. And then there is the colors. Since I have a little bit left here, I'm gonna use the rest of this on my scrap piece of paper that I have laying here. So it just gives a really cool watercolor effect. See there? All right, so I've used up all of that ink. I'm setting this aside, and I've got my base started. The next thing I want to do is I've got the Brutus Monroe Heart Lace. It's a real pretty lace pattern. I already have it loaded in my Misty. I have a scrap piece of paper in here so that when I over stamp, it doesn't get onto my mat. I'm going to place this right about the four inch mark here. Use some magnets way on the edge. This should, yes. Now, my stamp isn't quite six inches, but I'm going to go ahead and ink this up across the middle and stamp it, and then I will worry about the edges that didn't get stamped in a moment. Okay. 
sometimes when you've got that much color on a project, you've got to stamp it more than once. So I'm going to re-ink my ink pad so I have a really good coverage and then stamp again. My paper was still wet, and that's why the color isn't very vivid. And since it's alcohol, it's resisting the ink. I'm just going to go with it and move on to my next step. So sometimes things don't come out perfectly, but that's okay. We can survive. I've got some washi tape here. Now, I had rounded the corner before I started with my crocodile corner rounder. And it didn't dawn on me that I may want to fix this corner or edge up. So I'm going to place the washi tape on top. And then I'll trim it manually. I like how that it bled all the way through so it gets a pretty color even on the inside. I've got a couple of pieces of paper here. One of them is from an old book page. I'll use another scrap of paper. I've got the Oz here. And I'm just going to wipe over the top of this book page to give it some other color. Kind of obscures the words just a little bit. I think that would be a nice touch. And then I've got this Calico Collage Domino size image. I'm just going to go around the edge with Oz. And I think what I want to do is I want to add just a little bit of glue on one side of the domino image. And I'm going to line it up with the torn book page. I want to take this to my sewing machine and then zigzag stitch over here on this one side. So I've zigzag stitched. I'm just trimming off the threads. I'm okay if they kind of look frayed. I have it loaded with a really dark blue thread and then white on the back. So I just thought it would be a nice little touch here. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue around the edge and then place this down. I'm going to add another strip of washi tape just to give a little more interest. Then I have this roll of words that is old. It's from Seven Gypsies, and it's a fabric that's been printed and has adhesive on the back. So I'm just cutting off the word laugh, and I thought that would look good right there. All right, so now I have my book cover, and here are my pages that are all ready to go. So I'm going to line these up inside my cover. Make sure I've got them where I want them. 
And then I have a large paper clip here. If I can get it to stick on. That just keeps the pages from moving when I go to punch holes and sew it together in the center. So I've made a little template and it may be hard to see so I'll get a marker here. And basically I cut it the same height as my book and then I've punched three holes in here. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I started by folding the paper in half so I knew where my halfway point was. And then I used a ruler and measured in about three quarters of an inch. So they're pretty much evenly spaced here. So now that I know where I want my holes to be in this journal, I'm going to use my awl or pokey tool. Make sure this is lined up. And I'm just going to poke down through the center of those holes. Flip this around so it's easier to hold. Try not to poke yourself. Alright, so again, my book cover is 3 inches tall by 6 inches long. What I did was some wax linen thread that was left over from other projects. I measure one, two, and at least three links in order to sew a binding in the pamphlet stitch style. I start in the center, hold your little tail so it doesn't go away and pull all the way through, and then I go to the top. back down to the center. I like to pull this towards the top so that hole is nice and clean to poke the needle back through. I'm using a book binders needle. You can find some other needles in like the yarn department of some stores. It's not exactly the same but if you get one of the bigger ones that's really long. You can also look in the basically where they have the tapestry and trims for recovering or reupholstering or upholstering because they use them to poke all the way through the upholstered items. So now I've gone through the center and then back to the bottom. So now I have this gap here to finish tying off. I go under my first stitch at the beginning and I like to pull these tight. And then I tie a square knot, and then I tie one more square knot. I go ahead and trim off the excess, and I just think it's really cute to add a little bit of an embellishment in the center. So I have these little hearts that I punched with my Tim Holtz heart punch. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glue on the heart and then I place the string inside this glue, pick up another heart and make a sandwich. And then I'll do this on the other one. I'll remove my paper clips. And one more thing before I finish, I think, as always, I like to add glimmer mists. So I have Pearl Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. Remember to shake it to really stir up that mica powder that's in there. And then I'm just going to spritz this. A 
I'll take it a moment to dry. There is my little journal that I made out of scraps of paper using the Brutus Monroe stamped background as well as using the surface inks. I think that's really lovely the way it turned out and there are nice little spots to write. I like to have the paper that folds out. I just think that's fun and it gives a little bit more surface to write. There's a little pocket in here as well. Another page there. almost squished my heart. Don't squish your heart. Another pocket on this side. This one folds out the other way. I hope you enjoyed my little tutorial on making a miniature book, a miniature junk journal, if you will. If so, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm here to help you out, answer your questions. Be grateful to share with you what little bit of knowledge that I have in the arts and crafts and paper crafting. Thanks again so much for watching. Make sure you check out my blog post as well to get a list of all the supplies that I used here today. Thanks. Take a great have a great day. Bye.